Alright, so in this video uh, we're going to show that the derivative of x to the n equals nx to the n minus 1, where n represents uh, any positive integer. So uh, you may already know that this is actually true if n is any number um, at all, but uh, the proof that we're going to do only applies to positive integers, and actually the more general case uh, is going to come a little bit later uh, in another video. So for now, uh, let's go ahead and do this one here. So we want to show that the derivative uh, of x to the n equals nx to the n minus 1. So let's say uh, let f of x equal x to the n. Again, n is any positive integer at all. Uh, and if you just need a quick refresher, what's a positive integer? Well, it's just stuff like 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, and so on and so forth. So just these uh, whole numbers here that are greater than 0. Uh, that's a positive integer. Okay, so we have f of x equals x to the n. Uh, so the derivative, f prime of x, uh, let's use the alternate definition of a derivative that we talked about. So that'll be limit as t approaches x of f of t minus f of x all divided by t minus x. Okay? So this equals uh, the limit as t approaches x. Uh, if f of x is x to the n, then f of t is t to the n, and then we know f of x is just x to the n, all over t minus x. Okay? So, uh, if we do direct substitution right away, what happens? We get x to the n minus x to the n over x minus x. So, in other words, 0 over 0. Uh, and that's bad. So, remember, what we want to do is uh, try and factor somehow so that we can get rid of this t minus x. And actually, we can. Uh, if n is any positive integer, then t to the n minus x to the n uh, can always be factored to pull out a t minus x. So this is going to uh, equal the limit as t approaches x of uh, t minus x. All right, but now the question is, what, uh, what goes in here? Okay, if we're going to factor out a t minus x from t to the n minus x to the n, what's going to go in here? All right, um, so let's come off to the side over here and see what we're going to have. So let's uh, take a look at just a couple of specific cases. So let's say we have t to the fourth minus x to the fourth. Um, if we factor out a t minus x, then what we're going to be left with is t cubed plus t squared x plus t x squared plus x cubed. All right. So notice the pattern there. Um, we pull out a t minus x. What we have left is t to the third power plus t to the second power times x to the first plus t to the first power times x to the second power plus x to the third power. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. Okay. So that's if we factor t to the fourth minus x to the fourth. Uh, let's do one more specific case where we have t to the fifth minus x to the fifth, uh, and then we'll see what's happening there. So t to the fifth minus x to the fifth equals, pull out a t minus x, uh, what are we going to have? What we're going to have is t to the fourth plus t cubed x plus t squared x squared plus t x to the third plus x to the fourth. All right, so um, you kind of see a pattern start to emerge here. Uh, if you pull out a t minus x, then what you have in parentheses here is uh, t to the power that's one less than this power over here. Okay, so here's t to the fourth minus x to the fourth, and this one starts at t to the third. t to the fifth minus x to the fifth, this starts at t to the fourth. Okay, so this first power in here is going to be one less. All right, and then um, as you move along here, the powers of t decrease by one, while the powers of x increase by one. Okay, so this is like t to the fourth x to the zero, then t to the third, one less power, times x to the first, one more power. All right, then the power of t decreases, the power of x increases, t decreases, x increases, and again, uh, now this is like t to the zero, and then uh, the power of x increases one more. And the same thing happened up here. Okay, so we're always going to have this kind of pattern uh, going along here. Um, so if we try t to the sixth minus x to the sixth, then, you know, we'd have t to the fifth plus t to the fourth x plus t cubed x squared and so on and so forth. 
Um, but anyway, let's also look at one other thing here. Um, how many terms do we have? Here's one term plus another term plus another plus another. So this is four terms. Okay, so four terms. Um, how many terms do we have down here? Here's one plus another plus another plus another plus another. So there's five terms. All right. Um, so actually the number of terms that we have inside this parentheses here, uh, the number of terms is going to be equal to whatever these exponents are. Okay, so t to the fourth minus x to the fourth, we have four terms in here. t to the fifth minus x to the fifth, and we have uh, five terms in here. So this kind of pattern is always going to happen. Um, you pull in t minus x, then your powers of t are going to decrease while the powers of x increase, and uh, you have the same number of terms in here uh, as you do the exponent out here. Okay, so let's apply this uh, to our general case where we just have n's. So if we pull out t minus x from t to the n minus x to the n, then remember the first power of t that shows up is uh, one less than this power. So what's that? Well, that's just t to the n minus one, right? <clears throat> and then what's the next term? Well, the powers of t decrease while the powers of x increase. So this is going to be t to the n minus two times x. Uh, what's the next term? Well, it's uh, going to be t to the n minus three times x squared. Okay. Uh, and then let's say plus dot dot dot. Okay, this dot 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 indicates that the pattern we're exhibiting here is just going to repeat. Um, plus, and then let's just write the last two terms. What are the last two terms going to be? Um, well, the second to last term is just going to have t to the first in it. So this will just be t um, times x to what? It's going to be t times x to the n minus 2 because the last power of x that appears is x to the n minus 1. All right. So here, um, let's close that real quick. <clears throat> so here we're seeing uh, this is the same kind of pattern just in the general case with n's. So uh, t to the n minus 1 and n minus 1 is 1 less than n here. Okay, so that's why we started n minus 1. Uh, powers of t decrease while the powers of x increase. And how many terms do we have here? Uh, we have n terms, right? Because remember, the number of terms inside the parentheses equals this exponent. Okay, five terms, five in the exponent, four terms, four in the exponent. So here, this is n terms because we have n in the exponent. So this is n terms. Okay? Uh, now, what's on the bottom? Still t minus x. All right, now this is good because this t minus x is going to cancel with this one, and all we have left is the limit of this whole mess here. Well, when we actually take a limit, uh, what do we get? Now we can do direct substitution, right, because we cancel this, so when we do it, what happens? Uh, limit as t goes to x, that just means replace every t with an x. So here's a t, let's replace it with an x, so that'll be x to the n minus 1. All right, what about this here? That's x to the n minus 2 times x. Uh, what about this third term here? That's x to the n minus 3 times x squared. All right, and then we have plus dot 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 plus um, what's happening here? Replace every t with an x, so that's going to be x times x to the n minus 2. And then what happens here? That's just x to the n minus 1. Okay? So um, how do we simplify that? Well, x to the n minus 1 just stays that. x to the n minus 2 times x, well, x is just x to the first, right? So remember, if you have the same base and you're multiplying like this, then you add the exponents. So x to the n minus 2 times x to the first, this just equals x to the n minus 1, right? So uh, what we have here is x to the n minus 1. Okay, this whole term is x to the n minus 1. So let's uh, just write that here. So this is x to the n minus 1. All right, how about this next term? x to the n minus 3 times x squared. Again, same base, so we add the exponents. n minus 3 plus 2 is just n minus 1. So this term is also x to the n minus 1. All right. Um, plus dot 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 plus what happens over here? x to the first uh, times x to the n minus 2. So 1 plus n minus 2 is going to give us uh, n minus 1. 
So again, this is x to the n minus 1. And this last term is just uh, x to the n minus 1. So notice what happened here. Um, when we took this limit, when we did direct substitution, uh, replace every t with an x, every term became x to the n minus 1. Okay, so all of these terms in here turned into x to the n minus 1 when we took this limit. And how many of these terms are there? There are n of them. So we are adding n terms, uh, and all these terms are x to the n minus 1. So if we add x to the n minus 1 n times, then what we have is uh, oops, n times x to the n minus 1 because we added x to the n minus 1 n times, so that's what we end up with. So uh, that's a kind of a proof here that the derivative of x to the n equals nx to the n minus 1. Uh, but this only works, uh, this proof only works for uh, if n is a positive integer. Okay? And like we said at the beginning, uh, yeah, this is actually true if n is any real number, but that's going to come a little bit later. So for now, we've only proved it for positive integers. Um, so let's just see a couple of quick examples. <clears throat> so let's say we uh, have uh, example 1, let's say uh, h of x equals x to the seventh. All right, then uh, h primed of x is going to be what? Well, if the derivative of x to the n is uh, nx to the n minus 1, then this is going to be 7x to the 7 minus 1, uh, but 7 minus 1 is just 6, so that's our derivative there. Okay? So uh, that's example 1. Example 2, uh, let's say we have big F of x equals uh, just x. Alright? So what's the derivative of that going to be? So uh, let's say we want to find df dx. All right. Well, what's that going to equal? Well, uh, x is just like x to the first, right? So the derivative is going to be uh, 1 times x to the 0, but x to the 0 is pretty much just 1. So the derivative is actually just 1. Okay. So the derivative of x with respect to x uh, is 1. And uh, that's our second example.